This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. It's been a day of disruption and political fighting as thousands of teachers walked off the job. School students and their parents have been caught up in the escalating fight with 63 schools across the state forced to close early. Tonight our reporting team will take you through this major story. In a moment we'll hear from Louise Hedger on the disruption. But first tonight we'll cross to our political reporter Michelle Wisby who's at Parliament House. Michelle, good evening. Just how unprecedented is this action? Day and the industrial action across the state mark the biggest one seen by this Liberal government in the last two terms. What it shows is a significant breakdown between the state sector and the government over its 2% wages cap. The government says it cannot offer any more money or it will start to impact our budget. But unions have vowed not to give up the fight. Let's take a look now. A simple cry that's hard to ignore. Tip to be the largest public sector protest in a decade, a mass rejection of the government's 2% wages cap. Major rallies held in Hobart, Launceston, Devonport, Burnie and St Helens. Crowds including hundreds of teachers walking out of classrooms early. They feel disrespected by this government who seems to completely misunderstand the complexity of their work and the tough jobs that they're doing in our public schools and TAFE. Each with their own story of overtime hours, large class sizes and low pay. I love my job but the work, the expectations are huge. I do two hours of work at home having left school at five and then at the weekend I'm making aids, making things for my children. We have massive workloads, we're often taking work home after school hours. Um, so it would be nice to be recognised for that. I know of many teachers that are now going to four days a week instead of five so they can spend their fifth day doing work such as marking and planning. But despite the wall of opposition, the government is and not backing down. I think many Tasmanians um, will be bemused by the fact that they're having services um, uh, removed uh, from them today when what the government's actually doing is saying to, to our public servants we want to give you a pay rise. Opposition parties joining the protest to say enough is enough. Nurses and teachers, firefighters, paramedics have been forced to take this action because the government continues to refuse to engage with them in goodwill negotiating their wages. We know from our conversations with teachers and other school professionals that teachers have never been so overworked and they've never felt so undervalued by government. We believe it's fair, it's reasonable and I'd hope that the unions would come back to the table. And it's only just the beginning. This is not the end of it today. There's a, a, an ongoing campaign that our members are strongly committed to um, and we'll see where that takes us over the, over the coming weeks. And it was not just teachers that were frustrated with the state government today. We've seen nurses, we've seen policemen and firefighters and other public service, uh, service members all coming out to protest this 2% wages cap. So Joe, I'm sure this is just the beginning of industrial action from, from the public service. So 63 schools across the state, including this one, the one that Louise was at at Princess Street Primary, closed early as teachers walked off the job and headed to those major rallies. Now some closed as early as 1.30 this afternoon, which forced parents to make alternative arrangements. Louise Hedger was able to speak with some parents today who were very supportive and some who were a bit put out. Let's take a look at the reaction. The school pick up, but today it's before the bell rings. If they feel like they need to do it, I'm happy for them to do it and yeah, and have to get the kids early. Uh, they're welcome to their opinions, but uh, it's just an inconvenience to us parents. We just had to come in and pick them up instead of going home on the bus, so it's, um, <laughs> it's been okay. They're enjoying the, the bit of extra time off. So. Parents from 63 public schools across Tasmania forced to pick up students in time for teachers to attend today's rally. Uh, today I took a leave from my job so to pick him up, yeah. So they work very hard and they deserve a pay rise, more than 2%. It's not an easy job to do. I was a daycarer, so 
It's a hard job to look after kids. <laughs> Parent representatives sympathetic to the cause but don't support the strike, which falls in the fourth term and is just before exams. We would have preferred the strike action to have taken effect on Friday, which is a teaching orientation day. There'll be no kids at school. The union didn't agree. The union's accused of being deliberately disruptive with today's actions labelled unnecessary. All parties strongly urge to go back to the drawing board and negotiate to find a balance. Uh, what we don't want to see is Australia step back into the 70s with unions thinking that strike action is a, a fair way to, to move forward their case. At the end of the day, it's the, uh, it's the Hodgman government that decides where this uh, campaign goes. And if they uh, want to uh, disrupt uh, the uh, Tasmanian community more, that's, that's their call, it's not ours. Public sector workers maintain they won't give up the fight until their battle's won. But any further action that would disrupt the education of Tasmania's students is condemned. We would not support any further strike action that would be disruptive to children. I just as long as my kids are safe at school, that's the main thing. It's been worth it. Yep. Hasn't it? Yes. Because yes. yes. our teachers are the best. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. To the day's other news now, an emergency crews have battled a blaze connected to popular Devonport takeaway store Rennie's. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Our reporter Jessica Moran has more from the scene. Fire crews arrived here in Tasman Street just before 3pm to find the takeaway store behind me well alight. Neighbours arrived home to find a sea of smoke in their typically quiet street. I just seen the smoke as I'm coming down the road and thought, what's going on? Someone's burning off and then as I come around the corner it's like, oh no, this is not good. Police blocked off the street as fire crews worked quickly, managing to bring the blaze under control in around 30 minutes. The back of the building is made up of several rooms that are often rented out. Luckily, no one was staying here at the time, with the last occupants moving out just last week. The owners of the business were inside the store at the time, but were safely evacuated. They're both shocked, but tonight uninjured. Investigators say it's unclear if the building can be saved or if it'll need to be demolished. Damage is approximately 60 to 70 per cent of the building, including smoke damage. The shop front was saved, however, significant smoke damage throughout the building. The cleanup inside is expected to be considerate. It's also unclear when staff can return to work. Urgent talks are underway to save the jobs of more than 100 staff at Devonport's JBS Abattoir. The state government has today held round table talks with the industry and will speak with both the owners and potential new buyers in the hope of securing a sale. Devastated workers head home to an uncertain future. In less than one month, the gates are set to shut for good at the JBS Devonport Abattoir. Nearly 600 pigs a week pass through Tasmania's only major pork processor and the prospect of its closure has left many farmers uncertain. Come the 15th of November, um, you know, we'll be looking for somewhere to have our uh, pigs killed. You know, that's the date we've got for now. The state government is now searching for a white knight to take over the operation. Southern Cross News understands Tasmania Quality Meats could be among the potential new owners. What is heartening is that there is local interest in taking on the running of the Devonport Abattoir. The Treasurer will speak to interested parties and JBS tonight. I'm confident that there are options to consider and we'll be taking those options forward later today. We think one of the key outcomes is that the uh, abattoir remains open past the 15th. It's critical for, obviously for pork producers. Uh, moving into the busiest time of the year, which is Christmas. Butchers who value Tassie's paddock to plate culture are worried they'll struggle to support local farmers. It's a big thing if someone comes in and asks, you know, where's your pork come from, which is a big question these days. Uh, so 10 minutes from Exeter, I know these guys. It's understood the company has offered a small number of positions here at JBS Longford if Devonport closes. However, the union has concerns over the long-term future of this site. Concern now for me and the members of JBS Longford is how long it's going to be before JBS Longford is looked at. The company did not respond for comment. Sean McComish, Southern Cross News. The government has finally announced a new low-cost surgical termination clinic will start taking referrals in coming weeks. 
but the exact date the service will start, its location and name have not been released. The last provider closed its doors last year, forcing some women to fly to Melbourne for the procedure. The Health Minister has always said a service would commence in October, but with just days left in the month, it's unclear when the first procedures will be carried out. The service will initially run each fortnight, but could increase to a weekly basis based on demand at a cost of $475. Environmental groups are launching legal action against a federal government decision to approve a new development in the walls of Jerusalem National Park. Taking the matter to the federal court, the Wilderness Society has accused the proposal of being waved through. The controversial venture will include a standing camp and helicopter access near the remote Lake Malbina, offering a luxury experience for guests. But the peak tourism body has slammed the court action, saying the project was fairly approved after an extensive legal process. A fire permit period will tonight be declared for much of the state following an increase in escaped fuel reduction burns over the past two weeks. Tasmania Fire Service is still urging landowners to undertake reduction burns but to obtain a permit before doing so. The reason why we want to put a permit on is so that we are informed about where the fires are, we can respond to our brigades quickly and also we don't uh, respond to our brigades unnecessarily. Permits will be required in several districts in the south, north and northwest. Further information can be found on the TFS website. The state government has confirmed large cruise ships will not enter Wineglass Bay under a new agreement with the industry. Only vessels with less than 100 passengers will visit the iconic bay and will not stay overnight. Tourism Tasmania has welcomed the move. The fact that the cruise ships are now voluntarily not going to enter Wineglass Bay, they are seeking other experiences. So are there other places, for instance, on the East Coast? My feedback from the cruise lines to date on that conversation is that they are um, willing to work with the government around that. We're looking at new um, opportunities to, to fill in that, that space. The government says it's also looking to increase the number of ports on cruise itineraries. One of Hobart's busiest stretches of road will be closed for an entire weekend next month as the final pieces of a new pedestrian bridge are built. The Tasman Highway between the Tasman Bridge and Brooker Avenue will be closed in both directions from 7pm on Friday, November 2nd until 6am on Monday, November 5th. Work to connect the two ends of the new Bridge of Remembrance was meant to start weeks ago but was delayed after there were problems with cladding. There's no perfect time, uh, but it has to be done and this is the most appropriate time to do it. So we do apologise for any inconvenience, but there is a full traffic plan in place. We would be calling on all motorists to be informed, be patient and prepare, but be courteous to their fellow uh, commuters and motorists so that uh, we can ensure that we don't have any uh, traffic incidents. Authorities are urging drivers to avoid the area and to allow extra time for travel into the city. The final preparations are being put on Hobart's showgrounds for tomorrow's annual show day. And one group got a sneak peek at what showgoers could expect to see at the ever popular animal nursery. We got a special request from uh, one of the aged care facilities to see if they could bring a busload in today, being Wednesday. So we thought, well, you know, why not? More than 50,000 people are expected to turn out over the four days with gates opening tomorrow morning. Let's take a look at the day's business and finance news now with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market's weak October trend has continued with lower commodity prices weighing on the indices. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 14.1 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 71 US cents and 79.92 Japanese yen. With 11 Tasmanians now on AFLW lists, the state is punching well above its weight when it comes to producing elite talent. And AFL Tasmania now faces the challenge of keeping up with a popularity boom. With another three Tasmanians drafted yesterday, more young girls than ever are expected to begin pursuing their own AFLW ambitions. 
What's really important is that when girls participate at a community level that they have a good experience, that it's safe. But after experiencing a 300% growth rate in female participation over recent years, Tasmania's football facilities have been caught well off guard. Some of the stuff out there has been there since the 30s. One change room, which is laid out for men, not women, even the bathroom's access uh, is insufficient. Local councils have also been caught on the back foot, recently coming under fire for the lack of training ovals available in the off-season, due in big part to the growing number of women's teams. But with additional funding recently made available through the AFL, the catch-up process is underway, according to the AFL TAS CEO. People on the ground here will actually get money for a lot of the work they've probably volunteered and done, but it'll also make sure that we'll get the me best medical staff, strength and conditioning for our girls here in Tassie. While the TFC's new president says she plans to hold those, making all the promises to account. So we get the facilities right, that's one thing, but we also need to get the resources into our community clubs. And with the state set to field a women's side in the elite national junior competition, the TAC Cup from 2020, Squires is confident Tasmania will continue to produce a talent pool to be proud of. I was lucky enough to be at the AFLW draft yesterday and to hear the three Tassie girls' names read out was a great feeling in the room. Good evening. Temperatures drop below average today. Hobart 7 degrees cooler than yesterday with 14 degrees. Launceston 18, Burnie 16 and Devonport 15. Friendly beaches our high with 19 after a frosty start around the state. Minus 4 the low at Lyawini. Ooze and Campania 17, Smithton and Low Head 16 today. St Helens Grove and Strawn 15. The Bass Strait Islands 14 degrees. A few early showers over the west and south today. Mount Reed had 7 millimetres uh, brought uh, by that patchy cloud which covered most of the state by this afternoon. A cold front is cloud passing central New South Wales, some coastal low cloud over Victoria, mostly clear conditions elsewhere apart from where the front further west has generated some cover to southwest WA. Tomorrow the next front approaches Tasmania, crossing by evening. A low with surface troughs is over the middle of the country, the high covers the southeast of the nation. The winds tending west and westerly tomorrow, reaching 30 knots over southern waters before a further change to the southwest. We have a strong wind warning from Tasman Island to Low. Rocky Point. Hobart for People's Day at the show, a cloudy day, 18 degrees, you can handle that, 17 degrees for Signet and 17 for New Norfolk. For Launceston tomorrow, cloudy and 18 degrees, 16 the top for Devonport, cloudy as well for Campbelltown and 16. For Burnie tomorrow, cloudy, 16 the high, 15 the top for Strawn with showers developing, a late shower as well for Smithton, 16 the maximum. St Helens cloudy in 19, 18 degrees for Swansea and Fingal, bit of cloud around as well. UV, a straight line of sixes across the state. On Friday, showers over the west and south, mainly during the morning. Showers extending statewide on Saturday, maybe leaving the central north alone. Snow down to 800 metres. And on Sunday, fine after morning frost, the chance of a shower over the far south. Fine are mostly sunny in Perth tomorrow, along with Adelaide and Melbourne. A little cloud cover for Canberra and Sydney, and a late shower possible for Brisbane. And the current conditions mostly clear, Joe, but a little cool. Thank you so much for that, Murph. That's all from us for now. Good night.